These lower limestones contain several distinct fasces, all of which are fine-grained micrites, evidence for clear water and quiet conditions. Some limestones are massive and thickly bedded, but there are others that are extremely thin bedded. The micritic carbonate in them probably came from stromatolite growth. This is the most intricate looking rock we've seen. It's got elephant skin weathering, which is typical of limestones. The grey is calcium carbonate, and it should fuse with the acid. Yes, it is. The fawny coloured stuff shouldn't fizz, and it doesn't. So that's calcium magnesium carbonate, or dolomite. Studying the surface, you can see iron sulphide, or pyrite. The other thing to notice is that it's laid down in very fine laminations. A dolomite, then calcium carbonate, followed by a dolomite, etc. These colour bands, and there's lots of them, they signify uh, chemical changes. The grey calcite represents calcium ions being precipitated. The fawn dolomite layers represent calcium and magnesium being precipitated. And then the little pyrite grains suggest that ions of sulphur and iron somehow reacted together and were precipitated. Alternations between calcite and dolomite reflect changes in magnesium concentration in seawater. Magnesium ions are more soluble than those of calcium, so precipitation requires an increase in their concentration, probably by evaporation. The fawn dolomite layers suggest extremely shallow water. Precipitating iron sulphide is difficult by inorganic means. Some bacteria use the energy released by reducing sulphate to sulphide ions and live today in oxygen-free muds. Sulphide ions generated by them immediately combine with iron to form insoluble iron sulphide. The final evidence for shallow water conditions are cracks, very like those that form when muds are sun-dried. The bottom 35 metres of the carbonates formed in a warm, shallow tropical sea, occasionally disturbed by current action. The upper carbonates are very different. All the carbonates uh, higher up are this orange and, and fawny colour. And uh, they don't fizz. They're dolomites. And they're very, very coarse. In fact, there's some other grains in there that are standing out. Let's see how hard they are. Yeah, they've scratched the knife. They're quartz grains. So this looks like a much higher energy environment where quartz class are being brought in by currents from nearby exposed basement. Look at these. They're funny little star shapes. They look as though they were crystals that have filled up cavities and subsequently been filled with sand. Could they be ice crystals? They might be. They do, they do look very like crystals. There is another one. Um, there's a hydrated form of calcium carbonate called ichiite, which, uh, which also forms under cold conditions. Look, here's a dike. Is it igneous? No, it's a sandstone, quartz aronite. How oh, very odd. It's vertical and it's cutting across the bedding in the carbonates. And the grains in it, well, they must, they must have fallen from above. Uh, they can't have come up from below. Uh, there must have been some sort, of a, some sort of a crack here. Possibly an ice wedge. Yeah, possibly. Evidence for high-energy, near-shore conditions occurs throughout the upper carbonates. The relics of crystals, perhaps ice or low-temperature calcium carbonate, might reflect freezing conditions, but there are other minerals, such as gypsum, 
that can form by evaporation.